Good afternoon, Wayne. How are you? Good afternoon, Graham. Good afternoon, viewers, and uh, particularly good afternoon to our patrons. Indeed, good afternoon to our patrons. Have you recovered from your weekend? Just about. It was uh, nice to uh, meet some of the uh, channel viewers there and get a few games in with them. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? I mean, uh, apparently you're quite popular, it seems to be, amongst the people who were there. Everybody was talking about Wayne this and Wayne that. It must be my dulcet tones. <laughs> it must be. Um, all we're doing today is um, a very quick overview of, of um, the saga pageant because obviously um, there was there was a couple of events that was taking place there and the infrastructure and uh, what happened and probably um, our own personal experiences um, with the Ironman for which we both partaked in for two days. So Gripping Beasts were, <laughs> have been very uh, generous with the prizes and supporting the event as well. Um, and uh, obviously uh, the saga, this, this is a development of the um, Grand Melee event that was held at Warfare over the years. And I believe Griffin Beast wanted something a little bit more standalone, a little bit more saga Pacific. So they moved to Sirencester. Um, so the venue, um, big battles, and the, the chaps who run it are Andy and Derek. Is that correct? My yeah. yeah. Got that about right. Um, yeah, it's a, a standalone venue um it's, it's a bit it's quite anonymous to be blunt um it's on a, an industrial estate um and it's just behind a gym and everybody's running around doing what they do and i saw a flag and parked up and um walked in and yeah it was good um that was the venue um from the outside you wouldn't know it was there but from the inside obviously it's like a tardis opened up and there was lots of room and lots of facilities there which was great um, have you been there before wayne I have. I'd uh, competed in a sword point event there. Ah, so that's why Groovy Beast um, knew of it then, possibly, and yeah. they selected it. Uh, mm. And in Derek both play sword point as well. Sorry. And in Derek are both sword point players. Ah, this is all starting to make sense. Yeah. So great venue. Um, so Siren Sester is what ten miles north of Swindon in the southwest of England. Is that ten fifteen miles? Is that about right? Yep. That's right. right um small little town although we didn't see it <laughs> straight to the industrial estate straight in there um and then in the locale um as because it was an industrial estate there's fooderies there's a greg's there and uh, there was one or two other places where there was food so there was well catered for from that point of view and i think um purely from a, a geographical point of view i thought it was good as well that you know it's easy to get to right on the outskirts so there's no worry about getting stuck in a town or finding parking it, it was it was good any comments on that to add? No, as you say, I think it's uh, it's a good venue. It's well located. Uh, it can cater for probably up to 30 or 40 people, depending on the size of the game. Uh, Andy and Derek have got lots of terrain there uh, to use on the on the tables. They've also got um, like a big TV screen, so uh, they were able to put up the results of the games. Uh, free tea and coffee, free donuts. Donuts. Um, uh, free parking what more could you want yeah i mean uh, uh, from the inside um um over the, obviously there was an iron man there and the grand melee um you know over the weekend there were 30 32 different faces there and i think at any one time they could cater for was it 14 or 15 games is that about right or maybe more actually probably more i think uh the most they could probably accommodate would be 36 six by four tables which is plenty so there's plenty of room so yeah it was good made very very welcome um obviously the whole event was um, presided over by andy of gripping beast um for which he has a talent of presiding and standing and stepping forward and talking <laughs> but he did, did a great job um keeping it going and obviously in the background there was a guy called pirate rich there by richard um mm -hmm. he's got his own youtube channel uh, a painting youtube channel and i know he's quite heavily linked with the gripping beast boys and he was there and while we were gaming he was um painting miniatures wasn't he which were were they for spot prizes as well mm. yeah so uh rich set himself the challenge of painting up a warlord uh each round 
as a spot prize. So, um, so that was we, six. We so this is for the Grand Melee boys, to be fair, is to be clear. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was excellent. Also, um, uh, there was free, two free figures from Grip and Beast for the event. Yeah, two Vikings. Very nice, too. Incidentally, the uh, the last, one of the last spot prizes I think went to uh, Dom Saw, and he asked for a um, a special logo. He had he had one with the Gripping Beast logo on the shield, <laughs> which was quite funny. Um, but yeah, I mean, fantastic job as well. Supported the event really, really well. Um, right, so we we can talk about obviously. Um, I've gone over all the six scenarios in pre in pre, on previous um, on my channel with previous games and how they were set out. So it's difficult to talk about those, but we can talk about our experience with the Iron Man. Um, so um, the Iron Man was um, a two one day event, so you didn't need to come for Saturday and Sunday, albeit we did. Um, and of the each day, I think there was eleven or 12 on the Saturday, and I think there was 10 on the, 10 or 11 on the Sunday, something like that. And I think there were like five or six who were doing the double headers like like we did. Um, and to my mind, that, that's a great idea because um, not everybody can devote a whole weekend to it. Not everybody can devote a whole weekend to Grand Melee. So you're still getting people involved and those people who are coming are seeing Grand Melee and seeing those games being played, which... Is yeah, it... we did. We did have some uh, people there. It was their first game of Saga, so that was good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was good. Um, the rules of uh, the, the Iron Man was that um, uh, it was a six-turn game, and it's just pure slaughter. That's all it is. It's it's a, over the three games that you play during the day. It was the sum total of slaughter points, so you could lose every free, every game but still score highly and and win the win the event which is <laughs> quite bizarre so you know there's no point leaving anything on the table at all you've just got to go for it and try and kill as much as possible um another rule that he had was that um you rolled to see was the first player and that first player started with four dice which is unusual because it's normally clash of warlords is three dice isn't it i believe um and on a twist of that as well um the other four dice weren't um weren't locked in either so if you wanted to use your activation pool or as i discovered in the first game uh, my opponent was using orison he was popping three dice on there so in the, my first game my opponent had seven dice in play um so it does make for an aggressive certainly attack on the front foot kind of game so um yeah great as regards the armies on the saturday on the saturday he was playing, um, and Rich um, Keenan, who was running the event, Richard Keenan, he was he supplied all the figures, which is amazing. And he was it was Age of Hannibal and Age of Alexander, and um, there were some Merc units chucked in there as well. And there were six points, and they were painted up great. And um, yeah, I mean, amazing. All you had to do was turn up with um, your D six, your measuring sticks. In fact, the D6 were there, weren't they? That's where the measuring sticks. Just the measuring sticks, yeah. That's all you need. Battle boards were all supplied, everything. It was um, superb. And um, thoroughly recommend um, the Iron Man tournaments, particularly that run by Rich. Um, he, he's a great compare. <laughs> so I, shall I talk about my first three games on, on the uh, very quickly on day one? So uh, Why I, don't we go through it uh, game by game? All right, then. So... Uh, Okay, my first game I played, um, I, I went and stood um, by the Indians. Nobody else seemed to be standing beside them. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Wayne, Wayne thinks I cherry-picked him a little bit, but ooh, did I? Maybe, maybe not. No one seemed to want to be them, so I did. And no one else wanted to play them, so I ended up playing Demo Man Rich. Um, he was using successors. And... Um, I played the Indians a little bit, if anybody follows my channel knows. And um yeah, I, I, I did okay. I scored it was 30-14. So I, I did all right in my first game. How about you? 
So uh, for my first game, I played a regular viewer, Tom. It's nice to uh, see him and we had a good game. Um, Tom was using the Persians and I was using the Macedonians. I should have paid more attention to your uh, Macedonian games, Graham. Uh, <laughs> um, so I finished second in the, that first game. Uh, uh, Tom uh, used one volley after another to great effect to thin my ranks. Uh, it was quite a low-scoring game, certainly for me. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> still enjoyable. Yeah. Well, OK. So I get the idea. So my second game is a, of a little more interesting. Let's call it, um, in football, we call it a local derby. And I oh. ended up playing a guy called Wayne. Who, oh, right. It's funny I ended up playing a guy called Graham. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so uh, I was using success. What was you using, Wayne? You, you, you were using Romans. Oh, yeah, called the Republic. That's how much I remember. No, I, was, <laughs> I was using successes. But that's how much I choose to forget this game. Um, and uh, it was a... You, you did a number on me, to be fair, Wayne, and you always raise your game. And I lost. I scored 17 and Wayne scored 21, which in the scheme of things is good for Wayne. But in the reality of the, the event, yeah, 21 is, is, I would say, below average um, for a score. And 17 is even more below average. So I, I thank you very much, for Wayne, for bringing your A game to it. Well, I was a bit of a tactical uh, class, I felt. But uh, it's my first time with the battle board. Um, so stalled a bit to get the get the most out of um, the successors. I'd be interested to do a stat analysis on how everybody did with the Republican Romans because um, you know they marched forward, but um, it it was hard to to get into you. I found I was walking onto your guns quite a lot, and um, maybe the scenario didn't suit them. But that's the way that's the way the cookie crumbles you have to play what's in front of you so uh, yeah that was our second game um and the third game i played a guy called nick um and fortunately for, for me um i was playing persians and really possibly i should have done a, uh, scored a little higher I, I played the persians quite a lot with the indians and they were using um with the persians they were using a combo of eight half guard in one unit i could have split them i suppose into two fours um so that was where all the shooting was coming from obviously you're capped when you use one volley after another you can't roll 10 dice when you're assembling your combat pool you can only roll eight but even so eight and then eight and an eight on a rare 24 dice it gives out a lot of pain as you found out in your first game I mm -hmm. so and I, yeah. I i did okay i, I won 24 13 on that how about you? Oh, Nick is a, is a guy who plays a lot of club and farmer as well. So it's nice to play him as well. Uh, my third game was also against somebody called Nick, different Nick. Uh, I was using the successors again, uh, this time against the Wrecking Ball uh, Indians uh, with their elephants and bulldozer general. He was on a chariot, wasn't he? Yeah. And, um, you know, another enjoyable game, but... Uh, by this point, I'd got my eyes firmly on that wooden spoon and um, <laughs> was able to secure that with uh, a uh, poor performance in game three. Um, but uh, basically, I just I just couldn't get close to the Indians. And they just, uh, again... Uh, yeah, to be, fair to, to be fair to Rich, uh, Rich um, he did... He, it's not what I would call a, a competitive build he used, which was a good thing. Um, because he had a unit of mounted warriors, which is unusual for the Indians. And he was using the chariot um, as a warlord. Most people have it on Raj on the elephant. And also he had a unit of levy, just a standard levy with no bow. Which again, when I play, I play with two units of levy bow. Because that's where the, the dish out the real pain. So he, I think he had dumbed them down a little bit, which was a good thing. Um, yep. Yeah. Anyway, so, so that was end of day one, um, and I, can, I, I scored, uh, what was it, 71 points, uh, and uh, I came fifth uh, out of 11 or 12, 
so that's not too bad. Obviously, um, you didn't fare quite so well, and but you did collect a nice prize for it. Well, yes, obviously, strongest man in the tournament, holding everybody else up on my shoulders. Um, I can't remember what my final score was, but some sort of low mid forties. So um... forty eight, to be precise. Oh, right, okay. Better I took a I note of it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, half those ones must have been against you, Graham. Uh, they were, yeah. We're not going to dwell on that. So thanks for that. Um, the winner of our, uh, of day one was a member from Reading, was Rich, and he oh, um, and he scored a, an amazing ninety two points. So he was averaging over thirty points a game. And really, with this slaughter format, you need to really get stuck in. And um, you, there's no dancing. You just got to go in and accept you're going to lose things, but kill more and. Clearly, he went with that attitude and um, he was very successful. So fair play to Rich from Reading War Games for that. Yeah. So that was Saturday. On Sunday, um, uh, Rich decided to change it around a little bit and it was Age of Crusades. Now, I thought at one stage I heard a rumour there was going to be legendaries in there and mercs, but the reality was I don't think there was any legendaries at all and there, was, there wasn't that many merc units. There was the... Um, one or two Merc units have come across, but not as many as I was expecting. So, again, yeah, look, look really good. Sunday, uh, I think there were 10 players um, playing. So, between the two days, you know, great turnout, really. Um, my first game, I played Tom, um, and I was using the Saracens. I, I, if I was being a bit more canny, if I'm being honest... I would have found a better place to start than what I did. I think mean, key thing was that because I played Wayne once already, I was keen to play, not to play him again because he always turns me over in these things. So all I did was make sure I was on the same side of the table as him so I could avoid him. But by doing that, I didn't really look um, what I was going to use. And I ended up with my first game using Saracens, which I, I, I think I've not used them since version one. So I was really, really rusty. Um, he was using Mil Milites Christi, which I've used a lot and I know really, really well. So if I was clever, I would have gone over that side. But I think I was a bit half asleep from the beers from the night before. Anyway, I played him and he played really well. Again, he was the guy who capitalised on the... He was the first player. He rolled the four dice. Then he had three more dice in play. So he had seven in play. And I think on the first turn, uh, I had a unit of warriors in front of him and he killed seven of them. So I was a dice down before I even rolled a dice. So it was tough. Also, um, I over the course of the game, I struggled. I didn't notice that my my half guard, and I had two units of them, were mounted, had composite bow. And I didn't realise till turn five that I could have been shooting him. So <clears throat> didn't help myself too much. He was, to be fair to him, he played them well and he was... Miles ahead of me, but then he was going for the gold, going for the blood. He was trying to get his points up. So he advanced his warlord and I managed to nick that. And he advanced his half guard and I managed to nick them. And so in the end, the score was I lost 24 27. So I scraped eight points, nine points in turn five, turn six, which made my score half reasonable. But the reality was it was quite a one sided affair, mostly through my stupidity of not knowing the, the faction. But I suppose. A lot of people were coming into this who've played only Age of Vikings, so they're, I was in the same boat as them, really. I was I was learning about what was out there. So, good game, though. How about you? Uh, so, I've not really played much from Age of Crusades, so uh, I realised that the Sunday was going to be a real learning curve for me. Uh, my first game was against Andrew, and I was using Eastern Princes, never used them before and he was using the polish board um i think the polish board is acknowledged to be quite a tricky board to play a lot of their abilities are two dice abilities but i thought andrew played them really well and uh we had a, a very close game um just managed to squeak out uh, a win uh but only by uh, you know a handful of handful of points um Probably didn't get the best out of the Eastern Princes, but you know what it's like when you use a board for the first time. Always tricky to tell me uh, about it. Play quickly and you know get the, get the most out of the board. Mm. 
Well, I was following you. So my game two was also with the Princes, Eastern Princes. And uh, the build didn't have the war wagon. Um, and again, I think uh, it was more of a generic build rather than a competitive build, which which is a good thing for people who are using the factions for the first time. And I've never played Eastern Princes either. And I played uh, Nick again from Farnborough. He, he appeared in front of me. Oh, played him twice over the weekend. And um, he was using the Polish, as you said. And, um, yeah, they've got one ability on there, which um, if you put a rare on it, if he uses it um, in his turn, at the end of his turn, I can put two rare dice on any ability that I want, which is a, an amazing ability, really. Um, and I use that three or four times. So that must have been, I rolled three or four rares, which is quite good. <laughs> <laughs> um and I I, I I beat him uh 21 16 which I, I on the scheme of things is it was probably a below average scoring game for both of us but a win but in, in the eyes of the event possibly I mean I, I scored 24 and lost in the first game so I scored more in the first game and and actually lost so carry on so my my second game was uh, against Rob from Reading. Uh, All right. Actually, not actually played Rob before, but um, I think he's one of the the better players in the club. And uh, I was using Spanish again; never used them before. Uh, Rob was using uh, the Moors, and uh, I got a, I got a bit of a spanking. Rob managed to uh, table me, <laughs> completely uh, annihilated me. But I did take a few points off him in the process. Mm -hmm. um, good game. Um, again, I, I really struggled with the uh, with the Spanish. Uh, I don't think, uh, as you as you referred to previously, it, it was the sort of build that you would take with them. Um, there was only one unit of Jeanettes, and I, I managed to, to lose those in uh, turn two. Um, so it was an uphill struggle after that. But still, you know, good and enjoyable game. My third game, and I was following you around was also Spanish. I wasn't sure if it was the, the Mutts, actually, not, instead of the... Yeah, I think it was Moors. Yeah, it was Moors. And um, I did play the Spanish about a week ago at the club. So <laughs> I think I uploaded it as well. Um, so I, I was a little bit more used to the battle board. And um, you, you're right, there was only one unit of warriors with javelins, mounted javelins. So that ability, the bottom left, Ginetti's, Jeanette, uh, um, it wasn't worth it. I don't think. You, I think you need multiple units. It had two units of mounted half guard with javelin, um, and I played Rich, um, a regular follower of the, the channel, and it was great to meet him and talk to him about bits and pieces that we do. And uh, I had a, a reasonably comfortable win at thirty-one seventeen, um, but it was a good game, and we talked about tactics and how you can use the boards. And he was he was new to the. Um, uh, to Age of Crusades as well. So, um, you know, we try and help each other as much as we can. How about your third game? Okay, so my third game, uh, I ended up playing against one of the players from the Grand Melee. Um, we had a player drop out and uh, Dom kindly stepped in from the Grand Melee. Uh, he was using the Matata Wea and I was using the Mongols. Um, we all know your unblemished record with the mongols graham uh, however mine isn't so good yeah I know. And it was a uh, one of the most remarkable games i think i've played um dom uh, is an excellent player he's wise in the grand melee and uh he has <laughs> just about the first turn he put a unit of eight uh, hearth guard on camels basically or right into my grill and uh, I was then on the back foot, struggling to uh, to fend them off. Uh, he also went after my warlord uh, oh. with his hearth guard and with his warlord. And um, my brave lad managed to survive a uh, onslaught uh, from from the Matata Weir. And um, in the end, we managed to swing it round. And uh, once we got rid of those half guard camels, uh, we were able to then 
uh, go to work on his other half god and his warlord and then um, clean him. How up. did you find the kettle drummer? Um, worth his weight in gold. Isn't it? It wasn't it? I think I gave you, you asked for a few words of advice, I think, before the game. I shouldn't have told you, should I really? I should have. <laughs> as, as we'll find out why in a minute, Wayne. So the games were completed and we had a total up. And um, in the end, I scored um, a quite a credible 76. So I scored um, five more points than than the Saturday. So considering my first game, um, my, my second game was low scoring, I, I did OK, really. Um, however, um, you did slightly better from being rock bottom. I think you scored 78, didn't you, Wayne? Outrageous. <laughs> Outrageous. <laughs> You kid. So, uh, yeah, so me giving you those bits of advice. So I should really take the credit for your coming. So in the end, you came second and I came third. Um, so well done to you. And and uh, another club member, Rob, who you played in your second game, he scored a massive 96 points um, mm -hmm. to win the whole thing. So, you know, when you think about it, you had 78, 96. He was 18 points ahead of the next player. So his scoring was amazing. So... He was scoring, on average, 32 points a game. And was yeah. it 35 is the maximum, isn't it? 35 so he, well, indeed, I think, th is it 35 the maximum? I think it is just about, isn't it? So yeah. he was scoring, he was white, he, he'd wiped pretty well everybody he played. So uh, he played an amazing game. So fair play to him and plaudits to him. So, um, and, he, and he actually beat our other club member who won on the Saturday by four points as well. So I know they're good mates. So I think he's been... Um, jibbing him a little bit so uh fair play to rob so that was the iron man um clean sweep for reading on the, on the sunday then sorry clean sweep for reading on the sunday then yeah one There's two three yeah, it was it was a good job wasn't it um but yeah no really loved that the iron man format um while that was all going on over our two days the um the Grand melly boys were playing and um yeah, you could see the scores coming, and um, in the end, uh, it, it came. The top table on the the sixth game on, on Sunday afternoon was Mark Birch against Andy Lyons, two old um, friends who who are you know who have are pa past winners as well. So you know, um, it it was a good matchup, and they were both using um, Welsh, which is a very competitive faction. It was um, Age of Melee, um, so it was it was across all five books. So um, just goes to show how powerful the Welsh are. If they're both using them, they've both got through to the final. Um, I assume they brought they must have both bought a foot war band and a mounted war band as well. I assume they did that. Um, and I know it was quite a tense affair. Everybody was watching it towards the end, um, and Andy Lyons, I believe, just nicked it. At the um, at the knockings at the very end, and he he became Grand Melee champion. So fair play to him, and um, yeah, he's a great champion and a good result. Um, I took a snapshot of of the leaderboard, and hopefully you can have a look. And interesting to see some of the other factions. There was a guy called Andros. He was using a, a Carolingian faction, Moro. How do you say it? Moro, Moro, Merovingian, Merovingian, which is a Carolingian. Uh, derivative i believe um and yeah so they did well see it, the the indians were there near the top as well and there was a macedonian faction as well which is great to see so mm -hmm. across all the boards really the age of crusades wasn't in the top four so yeah that's interesting but um yeah i mean as i say, i've got some bits and um, obviously that meant andy got won the trophy um and well done to him so um yeah it was um a very positive weekend. Yeah, so, um, yeah, Nandy Lyons had a, got another win. So, uh, collected the big cup, which uh, congratulations to him and um, unlucky Mark for running like, a very close second. It was uh, literally down to individual points. 25 points, I think they got. So, um, I took a, a, a snap of the, um, the leaderboard. I'm sure there'll be better quality ones out there, but I'll share that after this. So, um, yeah, it seemed to, to go well, didn't it, Grand Melly? There didn't seem to be any um, 
dramatic or anybody querying anything. So, um, yeah, it seemed to be good. Any? Did you see anything at all of it or were you deeply ensconced in your Iron Man? No, unfortunately, I didn't get to see any of the Grand Mallet games. Uh, obviously, they were there going on in the background, but um, I was focused on that wooden spoon, Graham. <laughs> well, you didn't get it second time, did you? <laughs> <laughs> you nicked it off me for second place. So anyway, yeah, all good. Uh, so obviously, just to wrap it up then, um, you got to say uh, a big thank you again to, to, to Richard in particular for running the Ironman from a personal point of view. And obviously, Mark and... Andy, you know, they, they, they ran um, the um, the Grand Melee as well. So fair play to them and they run it and it seemed to be no problems at all. So that is good. Um, a big thank you must go out to um, Andy of Gripping Beast. I mean, they were giving out loads and loads of um, goodies, you know, spot prizes as well as, you know, the, you know, uh, for people who won the tournament as well. So um, a great job of promoting Saga in the uk and uh, i know they he he, uh, he uh helps other tournaments all over the world so we're fair play to them everybody at gripping beast for what they do for our, our hobby and our game mm -hmm. um, yeah. and obviously the venue um uh, derek and andy for uh, big battles uh, fair play to them and also rich the painting man so um a thank you to him as well um have i missed anybody don't think so. No, I thank you to everybody who played with such a great spirit over the weekend as well. So, yeah, really, really good. Enjoyed it. And uh, I look forward to the next one immensely. Probably I'm going to keep to the Iron Man because yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, well, well, I spoke to uh, Andy and Derek after the event and they, um, I know they're both keen to run another Iron Man event there uh, in the near future. Oh, talking of Iron Man, um, our local club, obviously, uh, there was a, a gap for Saga at um, at Warfare once Grand Melly was moved, and I know that uh, Rich is, of uh, Demo Guys is offered to run an Ironman um, event there. So if anybody's interested, have a look at the Reading War Games website and, and enrol on the Ironman. I know he, he just needs six, and, he, and he'll run an event. And by all accounts, the, there's loads and loads of goodies on on show. So um, and it's a one day event as well. I think it's Sunday, um, but check that and double check that anyway that's about it um thank you wayne as always um I'll sure you good thank job you viewers. and um thank you viewers and uh, we'll uh, we'll wrap it up there okay here's the venue from the outside it's quite deceptive as i said before and here is uh my romans against wayne's war band and here's Wayne plotting my demise, which he did so well. Next is my uh, Saracens against Tom's Milites Christi. Uh, tough old game that was. And here's a picture of um, Persians I used against Nick. For eight half guard in one unit, combined formation. And here's the Eastern Princes. I did struggle with these, but again, uh, the table's dressed up really nicely. Here's the Grand Melee Trophy and Richard, the painter, doing some fantastic work. And uh, here's a close up of what they're all battling for. And here's a quick panoramic view of, of where we played. This is on a Saturday, I think. So it was, you know, there was 30 people in there, so um, great venue. Um, holding everybody up. Strongest player. Strongest player. Mr. Wayne Richards, hey. no. 40 points. Wayne, now he's all the spoon prize, the Republican Tribune, the politician that doesn't fight very well, but can That's order me. everybody about. Well you done, sir. <laughs> Moving up swiftly with 45 points, 11 place, Colin. Excellent. Not far further up, Nick with. 47 points, he's in at number 10. I think you should do this in a Paul Gambaccini sort of yeah, way. Yeah. So coming in, sure. definitely not a Jimmy Savile. No, no, no. no. <laughs> um, Mr. Davies, oh yes, the third spot prize. That was Mr. Barter. Now, coming where we were, uh, coming up to number nine, mate. 
He's uh, with 48, Mr. Davies, Nick Davies, 48. Yes. Coming in with 50 points, Dad, Neil. Thank you. <laughs> in eighth place. Some demo bloke managed to get 60 points. Yeah, <laughs> then, Mr. Catterall. Yeah. 64 points, 6 points. Mr. Coates, <laughs> 71. A very credible 71. Coming in where we we're up to 4, Mr. Brinkman, 76. 76. Now, now we're coming into the, uh, the prizes, mate. So, in third place, with a very credible 79, Graham Woodhouse. Well done, young man. Asian well, well done. Beautiful. <laughs> so, um, in second place, with a very, very credible 83, Mr. Gary Sharp. Operations are my favourite. I'm actually going to donate that to my best game. Right. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Brilliant. Thank you. thank you very much. Now, copying for the spot prize, I think. Where, where's he gone? Where's he gone? Mr. Barter. Again. Oh, sorry, first prize <laughs> with a whopping look at the size of that 92. It's Mr. Richard Barter again. Well done. Well done. That came in with a 32, a 31, and a 29. Wow. Obviously, my vital statistics <laughs> when I was six. <laughs> <laughs> so, gents, that that be the end of this there Iron Man. Cheers, Rich. Well done. Good job. Thank you very much. But returning to the scores with a very creditable 58 coming in at number nine, pot pickers, Mr. Rich, small faces, Marriott. <laughs> number eight, we rise to 62, Mr. Andrew Parker. Uh, number seven, 67, Mr. Catterall. Yeah, rank on surveillance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, where was I up to? We've done, <laughs> done the cripple. So coming up from the trip, we've got um, <laughs> Henry. <laughs> First oh, wow. ever game, never played before. Oh, oh, on the table. Yeah, with a incredible 68. We could have scored one more point and given me a joke. <laughs> <laughs> so we're now up to number five. Where's number five on your board? Oh, here we go. Mr. Brinkman, well done, sir. 72. Well done, last done yesterday. Now we're getting into the top spots here. So, in four, Nick with 73. Well done. Well done, sir. Now, points to make prizes. So, oh, was there? Where? Oh, for four. Oh, four. Ah. Second, third, yeah. two fourths. Two fourths. Yeah. Two sevens. Two sevens. Who did I miss? Let's go over again. I can't wait. Yeah. 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 So, Drew, Sam, Andy. Okay. In sixth, we've got Henry. In fifth, we've got Tom Rickman. In fourth, is Nick and myself. In third place, we've got. Please. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Um, sir. <laughs> film, film the prize. <laughs> so, in second, then, sir, please. In second place with 77 points is Wayne Richards. Whoa! 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 Is this, is this a bit of a ready mix? Yeah. 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 Present, yeah. Yesterday was just a then, trial. Number one. Now, I have yesterday's scores. <laughs> Mr. Barter topped it with 92. However, drum roll please. With 95 points. Oh, yeah. Gents, thank you very much for your service. Now, Henry's had a lot of help and coaching, and hopefully, hopefully he's now addicted to the game. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. 
put your order in as you go out the door. So, thank you for Thank you ever so much for coming. Um, I think it's gone really well. There were no fisticuffs, no arguments, no oh, tantrums, no fine. nothing. No blood. No blood, so that's a big disappointment. Thank you ever so much to everybody that bought mats and stuff and helped out. That was really, really useful. I think uh, that's an excellent idea, so thank you, Matt. I'd like to thank um, Andy and Derek from Big Battles for hosting us. and. Um, and he's not watching the rugby, apparently we're winning. <laughs> you know, all those donuts. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. uh, also part of Rich for um, painting all the spot prizes. Okay. So each one of those figures that was given as a spot prize was painted during the round that it was awarded. So I think that's pretty impressive. And, uh, <laughs> Mark and the umpires for organising the uh, player pack because I'm useless and we could all be playing who can charge the fastest if it was my, it was my <laughs> player pack. So thank you ever so much, guys. Thank you. <laughs> there was one for this round which I didn't really advertise very well. It goes to Kurt for losing the fastest in the last round. <laughs> <laughs> Normally at these events, if you've been to ones before, which most of you have, you'll know it's casualties for Lost and Fair. This year we've got, because we're ahead of the game, casualties suitable for the next saga book, which is Age of Chivalry, which in case you didn't know, is probably out late, in, late next year now. So, late, 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 late. Uh, Don't quote me. <laughs> Yeah, don't quote me, but, but and we've also got Rich has painted up the the Grand Melee um, figures, so Thor and his mate here, uh, and he's put the Grim Beast logo on Thor's shield. <laughs> so, uh, excellent, well, it's fantastic. And this one goes to the strongest man in the room, who not only supported the whole of the rest of the GM players, but also the Iron Man on the same day. The only person I know who's lost two tournaments in the <laughs> <laughs> and that is an achievement that not even I have done. So, congratulations. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Cheers. I don't know, well done. Well done's not the right <laughs> phrase. <laughs> You're walking away with something. Leave me a few on a stick. This, uh, this next prize is for um, the judges' favourite arm, the favourite war band, which was selected. Well, I asked Rich and um, Derek and Andy to go around and pick their favourites, and then I chose mine. And that's the one I won. So <laughs> that was, uh, this is, uh, I don't know if you've seen it before. It is a um, rather nice dice box. Oh, Look at that. So it's got beast on the top and all round, and then you, you can't take them <laughs> off. <laughs> 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 These are only given out for best painted armies, and uh, our selection this year goes to Jed. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's a pretty prize. Yeah. I don't care. Uh, as you can see, <laughs> both scores, close to Christ, Andrews came third. Just quickly, I had to get Mark up to work out and then we went great. to the who played who and all the rest and all the stuff that I thought we'd never get into and didn't understand. So Mark's <laughs> the uh, Andrews comes third. Well done, Mary. <laughs> Some, uh, a little unit of half guards for Age of Chivalry and uh, Fox Irish. And then second, yeah. let me just check my list, I just want to make sure it's <laughs> <laughs> uh, It's Mark. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> a massive case of deja vu, it's so 
Congratulations to Andy, a well-deserved winner, um, and I apologise, I, really, I should really have interviewed him, and maybe next year when I get a bit slicker at these things. Anyway, well done again. Anyway, please like, subscribe, share with like-minded, take care, and see you all on the next one.